welcome to Ask the Educator, a podcast brought to you by Healthmark Industries. Are you a sterile processing technician or manager? Maybe you work in infection prevention or biomedical engineering. Whether you're a frontline tech, endoscopy tech, OR nurse, or surgical services administrator, you undoubtedly have influence in medical device processing at your facility. In each episode, we speak with experts from the Healthmark Clinical Affairs team, industry leaders, or special guests from the trenches to answer your questions and bring you relevant industry information, equipping you for excellence in medical device processing. My name is Kevin Anderson, and I will be your host. Now let's get started. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Ask the Educator podcast. This is your host, Kevin Anderson, and uh, with me, as usual, Adam Okada as co-host Adam uh, we get to throw out the red carpet again after one of our international webinars and uh, welcome in one of our own from uh, clinical affairs here at Healthmark uh, Melinda Alamari she did a presentation hopefully uh, you guys out there our listeners were able to catch it live if not no worries it is available under the education tab at hmark.com under the past webinars uh, section uh, so I definitely uh, encourage you to catch that so with that being said, Melinda, let's get into it. Uh, your uh, webinar today, it was all about sterility or sterilization, a murder mystery, which made it a little bit extra fun and interesting. So uh, Melinda, in the webinar, you gave kind of a history lesson on sterilization and how each of the sterilizers work to kill microorganisms. So why is it important to understand how the equipment works? So, hey, Kevin, thanks um, for having me on. And um, I just want to say that if I'm going to get like red carpet, I think there should be like some applause so that I can come out and do the princess wave and stuff like that. I'm just, anyway. Yeah, we need so the sound your... effects. No, that's a, that's a good point. We <laughs> yeah. should invest in some sound effects. That's that's valid, valid concern there. <laughs> valid concern. I love it. Um, so I think it's really important that we understand how our sterilizers work so that we can help troubleshoot, right? Like so many times, you know, you talk to a technician and, you know, they've been there for years at a time, maybe 20 years, 30 years, and you're asking them, okay, like, when do you run a Bowie Dick, for instance, right? And they're like, oh, we run it on this cycle and that cycle. And it, and they don't understand really the functionality of the sterilizers. And so, you know, and it's not their fault. It's just like nobody really taught them. Once again, we I think, you know, our common theme for all of these is always the whys, understanding the whys. And nobody ever teaches the whys. I think we're starting to see that a lot more. But previously, it was always, you know, you do this, you do that, A, B, and C, because Melinda said so, right? And we're going to do what Melinda said. Um, I wish. Anyway, but um, so it's just really important that we understand our equipment and what we and how it functions so that we know, okay, like, so somebody comes in tomorrow and tells you, all right, Kevin, you need to run a, a Bowie Dick um, on the prevac cycle, but you also need to run one on the gravity cycle. You know, like your mind should start going, hmm, there's something wrong here, right? Because why? Because we know that the gravity cycle doesn't use a vacuum. And what is our test actually testing? So understanding our machines, also understanding the anatomy of our machines, right? So when we start seeing condensation on the inside of our walls of our chambers, there's a problem with our jacket, right? There's something wrong there. There might be a leak. Um, so we need to make sure that we're able to help troubleshoot and know, you know, this is our profession. This is what we do. We need to know it inside and out. We want to be able to understand it and troubleshoot inside and out. Yeah, that's a great point. Cause I, what I always say is, you know, there is a science behind sterile processing. You know, when we do everything that we do, there's a science behind everything. And sterilization is a great example of that because we need to understand sterilization theory, the jacket that you talked about, the anatomy of our sterilizers and things like that. We have to understand how that works. Otherwise, what we're doing is not a science. We're just pressing start and we're pulling loads out. And that's a very easy thing to do, you know, but understanding the science behind it, that's what really makes uh, sterile processing so great. And speaking of that, you gave a great, if terrifying example of how steam sterilization works in your presentation. Uh, can you share that story for our podcast listeners so they can have nightmares tonight too? <laughs> You're really trying to get me in trouble even more. 
but real quick, I back to the jacket concept, right? Like, I think it also, you know, we we look at the concept for what our machine does and, and the different things, like you said, Adam, we just push a button, we start getting mechanical action, right? We're just like robots at that point. We just do this and that, right? Um, but, you know, when we start looking at something like a jacket, you know, understanding how it functions and why do we refer to it as a jacket? It's the same concept of like you putting on a jacket. The jacket doesn't warm you unless you have those new spiffy ones that have warmers in them. That's amazing. But, you know, I mean, basically the job of the jacket is to take your own body temperature and your body heat and keep it within to keep you warm. So if you correlate those two, you understand how the jacket now works on your sterilizer. Anyway, back to my terrifying but appropriate story. So, um, in the presentation, I talked about what the difference was between gravity and prevac, and how do we understand what the difference is. For me, I'm the kind of person who has to have a um, like something to relate to, and you know, so I can truly comprehend what's happening. Basically, what I state in the, the presentation is, let's just imagine we're all in a room, right? So right now we're all in this studio, and you know, Adam and Kevin, you guys just. Uh, you just irritate me. I can't take it anymore. So, you know, I'm at the point where that's it. I, I need to go, but before I go, I'm going to kill you. Right. And so the way I'm going to do that is basically I'm going to take, I'm going to take this studio. I'm going to seal all the nooks and crannies in it. And every little door and window that's there, I'm going to seal it. I'm going to put a pot of boiling water in the middle of this, this studio. And I'm going to chain you guys to your desks or your chairs. I'm going to let the water boil. And when it boils, what doesn't exist with, in the same space as steam, right? Steam gets generated from that boiling water, heats up. What doesn't exist? Air. Air doesn't exist. So we build up the steam. It pushes out any little remnants of air. So you guys can't breathe. You're not going to be able to breathe. So your aerobic means that you need oxygen. You can't breathe. You also are getting hot. You're sweating, right? Um, and then also, so you're you're hot, can't breathe, um, and like you know, you're sweating. Your body's losing that moisture and stuff, right? And so you're trying to break free. Like your goal is break free and try to escape, right? I'm looking at you guys through a window, and I'm like, hey this is taking way too long. So I need to speed this concept up, right? I've got things to do. It's been about 20 minutes now. You're not dying fast enough. I need to speed this up. So I'm going to take the walls of the studio and I'm going to squeeze them in. And once I do that, I'm increasing the pressure. Maybe your heads will explode. But anyway, um, and then so you're, you know, maybe you break free. You You try to run to the door. You're trying to get out the door. Um, you're trying to suck in some air from any nook and cranny you could possibly do, right? And that right there is an example of how gravity sterilization works. So imagine that this studio is actually a chamber of a sterilizer and you guys are those little microorganisms in there. So you're going to try and escape. You're going to try and escape. The only place you can would be the drain line, right? It's the coolest, your only way out. So you're going to try and get to that just like you guys tried to get to the door, right? So gravity takes longer. It takes time for that steam to build up and push air out. And that's why we process things like your um, breast sizers in there. We process things like your sigmoidoscope with the glass lens on it because that that needs that time to build up in that heat change in a slower time frame. Now let's talk about pre -vec. And less pressure, right? Let's talk about prevac, right? So we have the same scenario. You guys just really ticked me off. I'm done with you and I need to kill you, right? And so instead of putting that pot of boiling water in the middle of the room, I'm going to put a fresh a steam vat, um, sorry, a steam inlet and a vacuum hole on each side of the room. So I'm going to vacuum your air out. I'm going to push steam in, vacuum your air out, push steam in. And so I no longer have to wait for that time frame, right? So I'm by the door and I'm looking, I'm like, it's three minutes. You know, I've got things to do. I've got people to meet. Um, this is taking too long still. So I squeeze those walls in again, increase the pressure. 
and we're speeding up the process. It goes a lot faster. So that is prevac. So now that we know those difference between those two, we can, like I said, Bowie Dick, for instance, we know we're not going to run a Bowie Dick on gravity because there's no vacuum in there, right? So it helps us determine and think through different scenarios, right? When we truly understand the process and it helps us determine how fast you need to kill somebody and by steam sterilization. That can be yeah. really important, at least when, uh, you know, you're not using it on your peers, <laughs> uh, but, you know, on surgical instruments, that's totally acceptable. And microorganisms. But yeah, it, it, but and to your point, I mean, people do think of things differently and, you know, different scenarios and stories and like that uh, do help certain people. And I think that's sometimes a good way to illustrate it. One of the things that you pointed out too, that I think is a good point is understanding, you know, like, why are we doing the dynamic air re removal test? And, you know, if we understand that why, then we also should understand like, okay, we probably don't need that for a gravity cycle, yada, yada, yada. I love that you put that point in there because I think, you know, uh, understanding that why portion of behind what we do is so important. And if you do miss that part and you miss the scientific side of things, it is hard to kind of have the credibility to have conversations uh, with, you know, administrators or physicians and why they should be doing this or not that or supporting you in some way. And, and so I think having that understanding goes a long way, especially in the hospital. You know, I mean, to your point that also, you know, in the presentation where I talk about, you know, the percentage of dry steam mm -hmm. coming in versus wet steam and understanding those factors, right? So when you're sitting in a meeting and you are talking to engineering and stuff and you're able to say those numbers, you're able to really talk confidently about what you're talking about, Um really helps drive home that point, right? And so I've been in meetings where I literally had engineering people go like, where'd you pull those numbers out of your rear end? Like, because they didn't believe me, like what I was telling them, I'm like, no, I pulled them from your own standards, right? Which is also adopted in Amy. Um, but, you know, so having that knowledge really helps on those aspects as well, so... It's a great point. And, uh, you know, obviously the wor real world examples help too. And, uh, you know, it, at some point you are going to be on, you know, at the table with other leaders and you got to be able to explain things um, on their level and and have that confidence. So um, speaking of gaining confidence with sterilization, I mean, it, it always helps to be able to, you know, um, when a surveyor comes in your door, be able to speak to your processes. Um in particular with sterilization and all of those things, I've, any related thing with sterilization anymore. It seems like the processing of medical devices is always on the the hit list these days, which is actually a good thing. Uh, but that being said, we get our chances to go around and, and kind of do, you know, mock surveys or we call them uh, consultative practice reviews and things like that. So what kind of things do you think uh, people out there listening to this should be you know, aware of and looking for uh, to be in alignment with surveyors and be able to answer their questions and and to do so confidently about sterilization specifically. There's a definitely a couple things that are very um, out there in the forefront that we should be paying attention to, right? Like loading your sterilizer. Um, how are you loading that period, right? That's one thing. And surveyors are looking at that, right? They're looking at how are you loading your peel pouches onto that sterilizer cart? How are you loading your trays? Um, you know, those kind of things. Also the reading out of your printout for your sterilizer, like I talked about in the webinar, you know, making sure that your staff understand how to read out that printout, not just, you know, okay, well, I'm looking at this S and the Zs and the Cs, you know what I mean? Like, no, what are the numbers and what does that mean? And that really goes back to, again, the why, right? Like, it's not just, okay, I know that there's no red mark on here that says, or no black mark that says aborted. Understand the whys behind what you're looking at and the numbers you're reading. So you can really comprehend that. And you know, did my sterilization process really happen? You know, so those those are big things. Documentation, right? Like, how are you documenting your load? Are you, once again, like peel pouches? We see that a lot, right? Are you documenting, you know, 10 peel pouches? 
Well, that's great. Well, when you have to do a recall, do you just go pull back any 10 peel pouches? You know, like, or you go in a search through hundreds of peel pouches that most facilities have looking for, you know, a load sticker that has that date. So we need to be specific on what we're processing. And then so we know also if anything happens with the patient, we can go back to our loads and stuff like that. Biologicals, right? Like, you know, we've all got this great concept now where it's like 20, 24 minutes, 28 minutes for your biological readout, you know, far better than our 72 hours, right? And our, then we got to three hours and everybody was like, yes. And, you know, now we're down the this short little period, but knowing like, okay, it's not just quick biological, but understanding, okay, I've got to label it. I've got to make sure I'm doing it correctly. And how do I do that? Not sticking, once again, right? We go back to understanding your biological, how it works, the anatomy of it, right? So I know I can't take a load sticker and wrap it around the cap. I'm now blocking the air vents for the bio for the spores because they are aerobic and making sure that we're following processes. So I think there's quite a few things that surveyors are really knowing and learning more about placement of your test, right? A your A test and your Bowie Dick, like I said, your Bowie Dick, putting it actually on a cart. You know, I go, we go in and do CPRs and I don't know about you guys. I'll ask, I just ask and people are like, oh no, we just stick a basket at the bottom. And, you know, I put the Bowie dick in there and I'm like, yeah, that's not allowed. <laughs> so, you know, so yeah, there's quite a few things out there. I don't know if you guys have seen any that you can add to it too. I mean, I, it's certainly changed and you, you made a great point that they, they used to come in and not really understand. I remember we had one of those the printouts, it was like a spirograph and it had little lines around the edges of it. Yeah. And when I would ask my coworkers, how do, how do you read this? Um, I remember them saying, well, we don't know how to read it. So then I was like, okay, well, we need to bring in the manufacturer to like learn how to interpret this sort of weird spirograph printout. And um, it actually made sense once they explained it, but surveyors would come in, they look at stuff like that and they'd be like, I don't know what, the, sure, that looks fine. I don't know. But they've learned over time. They've gotten a lot more education and they're understanding. And IUSS is usually one of the first places surveyors go. So I definitely think the the, the focus on standards has changed uh, over the years. But what are some common mistakes that you're seeing with steam sterilization in the field? I mean, we, again, we go do these consultative practice reviews. If you're interested, HealthMark does them for free. You can go to the HealthMark website and uh, we do these CPRs. But what are some mistakes uh, that we make with steam sterilization? I think, you know, we, we kind of talked about some of them, loading of your sterilizer, right? That's a huge thing. Cleaning your, the um, drain lines. Um, so, you know, sometimes we are like, oh, you know, you go into facilities and are like, oh, we're having problems with wet packs or we're having problems with like our filters. So we get that a lot, right? Like the, the tray liners, you know, they're white. They act as a filter and they show all the problems with your steam process and your machines and stuff like that. And so understanding that it's not the liner, it's not the liner who's giving you stains and stuff like that. It's just basically it's your steam getting filtered through it. And now it's showing, um, you know, so understanding that stuff and knowing that, you know, this is what the process is, right? Are you cleaning your, the drain lines? Are you cleaning those out on a daily basis like it's supposed to be done or whatever your manufacturer says? You know, documentation, understanding and reading out your load record, all of those things are key factors. Here's another thing that we I see a lot and it's somewhat sterilization, right? But when you're assembling your tray, just something simple as like, where do you put your chemical indicators? So this is something that we see a lot. Like if you, according to the IFUs, if you are putting your chemical indicators, if you're going to wrap a tray, you should have one in the center of your tray. And then if you're going to put it into a container, you should go opposite corners. And then each layer, you switch corners. Um, and then each layer for a wrap tray, you put one in the middle. And this is because this is the most resistant area of those trays. So if we think about it, once again, the why. Steam has to get up into those filters, circulate around those corners. So the corners are the most resistant for the rigid container trays. And then when we're talking about wrap trays, we put all of our folds right there in the center of that tray. Like all the bulk of that wrap is right there in the center. 
So that is the most resistant area for those trays. Once again, you know, understanding that, knowing why you're doing that. Um, that's another key thing that I see with sterilization. And, you know, just different factors like that. Load stickers. We see that, you know, a lot. Um, the wrong load sticker being used. I think, oh, peel pouches, you know, I mean, <laughs> I you guys know I was going to talk about packaging, right? Um, so, you know, peel pouches, you know, the way that they're placed on the sterilizer cart, but also the way that they're sealed. So making sure you're actually doing the sealing process correctly. And that's literally starting in the middle with your two thumbs and work your way out to the edges. So you don't have loops and wrinkles and stuff inside your seals. Yeah, those are good ones. I, I have to definitely agree. I see a lot of things, you know, one of them, you know, when I ask people is, why are they signing their name to the printout? And that's a good, you know, indicator if they can explain, yeah. you know, why they're signing it, you know, that they don't have that understanding there of of what they're looking for on the printout, which is a is a good one. And of course, you know, loading loading the sterilizer cart, you see different texts do it differently. And uh so there's a lot of variation there. And a lot of times with peel pouches, they tend to get bunched up into a basket and just kind of put in there, which you know, if you've ever seen the video of a peel pouch inside of a sterilizer like we have on our YouTube channel, uh, Healthmark Education, go subscribe. Uh, but the, the the peel pouches, they expand like crazy. And if you saw that video, you would understand like there's a reason you can't just, you know, bunch them all up, put them in a tray and, and load them like that. But uh, that being said, thanks for sharing the common mistakes. There There are plenty. Uh, but those ones stuck out to me as ones I commonly see uh, as well. So with that, though, Melinda, it, it's time to wrap it up. But I wanted to give you the floor in case you had any final thoughts. I think, you know, for me, I just want to say, you know, sterilization process is extremely important, right? We we often, I think, talk a lot about cleaning and decontam process, which don't it's it's important, right? Because you can't sterilize if it's clean, not clean. But this is also another key aspect of our pro our job. And I think it's just one of those things that we're really just taught how to be a robot with. You know, you put them here, you put them there, you push this in and you push the button. Just take some time and learn sterilization and what it's about. You know, I mean, scientifically, it's amazing, you know, like the things that happen inside there, um, you know. And so just knowing what how your processes work and how your machines work. We talk a lot about steam, but, you know, I mean, it's the same thing for hydrogen peroxide, you know, and the whole concept behind that and how your machines work. The difference between gas plasma and then just hydrogen peroxide and, you know, understanding those different aspects of your sterilization process. I guess I'm a nerd because, you know, I just think like this stuff is so amazing and I love the whole world of sterilization, the whole concept around it. Um, but, you know, it just it definitely gives you another understanding of the importance of what we do in sterile processing on a daily basis. Thank you, Melinda, for that. Uh, and if you didn't check it out, go check out October's webinar on the Healthmark page, uh, Murder Mystery, Death by Sterilization. Um, awesome webinar by Melinda. So please go check that out. If you dare. And uh, go check again, like Kevin said, our YouTube channel. Please subscribe at Healthmark Education and uh, the podcast. Keep listening and we'll see you on the next one. All opinions expressed on this show are those of the presenters. Before using any medical device, it is important to review the device manufacturer's instructions for use.